I got goosebumps chilled. And how great. The reason that rivalry was special, you had elite teams that hated each other, that played each other for the ultimate stakes. When you're seeing some of the past interviews with us, like with Chris Draper and Claude Mew or me or Joe Sack or Stevie or whatever, we're younger. But now you see us now. It was it's said in the preview, what makes a rivalry? Well, there has to be legitimate. There's got to be hate. There's got to be hate. There's got to be, I want you dead. Th right. Hate. Did want to talk about this too because it dropped over the weekend and people were hype. The E60 special on the Wings Avalanche series is coming out, D Mac. Oh. I don't know if you're aware. They were actually uh, I, they were I, actually here taking footage before. So yeah, no, and, and people ask me is it like I shot my scene when Claude Lemieux was here and we did the March 26, 25 year anniversary though all that weekend and yeah, the they ESPN came in here. People were in throughout that, but. I was the same way, um, and I, I think it's dropped between games two and three of the finals. Um, don't quote me on that or whatever, but to see that preview, and and the way they always shot it, and I was trying to think, and I know that I you know haven't been in since then, but like, is this this has always been the thirty for thirty that I wanted to see, and not just I know my part in it, and I know my perspective, and I. But it's so awesome, not only to, to hear everybody, and you look at the end, if you saw the preview to the, to the clip and then it went through everything, but at the end, Neil, and, and, and it's the Godfather music and it's just the ambiance, but when they flash, all the names. Sitting down. And the faces yeah. sitting down, because it's 25 years later. So the thing is, is that you're not seeing it, like when you're seeing some of the past interviews with us, like with Chris Draper and Claude Mew or me or Joe Sackick or Stevie or whatever, we're younger. But now you see us now, and you see the Claude Lemieux, and you see the Patrick Waz, and you know the Mike Ricci's, and the, the guys that, you know, where we've had time to reflect. I'm always interested to hear what other guys say. You know, I, I say it all the Which, that's the most interesting thing to me, and I'm compromised, obviously, because I talk to you about it regularly. Yeah, we talk on I a mean, daily uh, basis. Anybody who knows me that's that's seen the D-Max show, the Slaps of Comedy, or whatever, anytime I get to talk about it, I love to talk about it, and... I'm always looking for different things, perspectives, and when guy when guys that were there involved, and when we haven't talked about it or conglomerated about it, gives you different perspective. Even seeing it back, I got I got goosebumps, chilled, and how great! And because these thirty for thirties are epic, we know that here because of what they did with the Bad Boys, their Fab Five, or stuff like this. Um, and at the end, when you see Vladdy there, and and you know. They asked him the question, what was the best part? And he says, beating them. I mean, the, like that just, because it's 25 years later and there's something to tying a bow or tying, you know, something to what me, I personally got out of sitting down with Claude after 25 years and with the interview and, and the night and wanted to, ex, you know, express, you know, like, like, you still have those feelings it's okay to f forgive but you don't have to forget and this this just ties it into a bow it, it just i don't i don't know i was as excited as anybody else here here's what was interesting to me to see because you can't fake emotion right when the the emotion on on some of the faces and it, the emotion was hate like, let, oh, let's not get it is... twisted. There was still hate. I think that's what got everybody hype was it wasn't, it's not something that 25 years go by. And it, because I had a lot of people ask me, went to a couple barbecues. They asked me, they're like, you know, what, what did you think about it? Do you talk to DMAC about it? Those kinds of things. So they asked me, and I said, the, the thing that got me, and I'm going to ask DMAC about this on Tuesday. So here we are. Were you surprised? Because it is interesting that you and Claude have gotten past that moment on the ice in terms of a, of a hate perspective. You guys have gotten past that. Well, Some dudes on the teams have not gotten past that hate. Is that have, fair? But we've – is this fair that over the past – we've done therapy. We've done right, events. Right, out in the community. We've, right, right. No, no, no. But, but we've done – whether the autograph shows or whatever. But, I, like, when I say I've done therapy or whatever – I've crossed paths with Claude. Claude's the, I've crossed paths with the most out of those guys, right? I spent a weekend with Adam Foote a few, 
uh, a year and a half ago with a bunch of the other, you know, collared like Scott Parker, the sheriff who wasn't part of this Colorado is is one of my, you know, great buddies and stuff like this. Um, so I have it. It's weird because with that old code or whatever like that, but the respect that I carry because of honoring the code and it's all about that code, but there is hate, but guys haven't been able to talk about it. Guys have only had to bury it with their feelings and stuff like this. I've gone through a lot of, you know, being able to get to the point with Claude personally off the ice as the person has had to do with a lot of me growing up as a man and and being able to to show the example so to me this is just capsulate with all the video and the footage from back in the day but but neil it was it said in the preview what makes a rivalry well there has to be legitimate there's got to be hate there's got to be hate there's got to be i want you dead Th right hate and there was there was no pulling punches to either side now there was certain respect because there had to be because you had two of the best teams. That's what also made it too, right? But there was a respect. What, you know, you look in other, in other sports, there hadn't been this hatred. And the hatred fed down to the fan base. Absolutely. But at the, but at the, the coaches, I mean, everybody. It was everybody. And I'd forgotten about that, that clip when Crawford and, and Scotty are barking at each that, other. The best part about that is Scotty going, Mark, I know your dad. Wouldn't be happy with you right now. <laughs> like so it's on the brand. Stupidest, huh? Like so on brand with Scotty. But just to throw that's like a that's Scotty throwing a jab just to throw it. What, what what my dad? Wait, wait. You know, like the old school mentality. So the stuff that'll come out, the stories that'll come out, because it's always good at asking questions. So hopefully it it's just another piece of history that happened that is not just a part of me. It's part of everybody that's involved or the younger kids to why when they stay growing up it was always like we didn't get to see Gordie Howe and Ted Lindsay and whatever but we learned and got to meet the men and learn about everything else well this is for all you younger kids to understand well the why and and Neil to the whole thing is because as much hatred and stuff going on in the world today like this was as real as it gets in the sports avenue I mean like if Hatfields and McCoys or whatever like this. I mean, it's a good thing that they only had sticks on the ice because if you would have put deadly weapons, some of us would not have made it through. Right, right. And and that's and that's what it was. Uh, Harley Fife wants to know, have, have you ever sat down and talked with Adam Deadmarsh since it all went down? To Adam Deadmarsh? Yeah, yeah I've, I've run into Deadmarsh a few times. And, the, the, you know, the, that's a sad because he was such the the warrior competitor for them and stuff like that and then he ran into some concussion problems and stuff like this but uh not really talking about the rivalry and stuff like this but you know just to, to talk hockey and understand you know like he he was you know for lack of a better term uh, uh i was the poor man's adam dead but he was way better but he played that sort of role yeah it's just for me the reason and seeing that commercial that preview for it kind of all brought this back center circle because I think it does get lost sometimes. The reason that rivalry was special and is, I, I doubt you'll see in hockey again, for real. Like, I, I don't think we'll see another rivalry like that. And here's why. Because you had elite teams that both won, that both won cups, that were, that were great teams that hated each other that played each other for the ultimate stakes. Every single time you guys played, everything was on the line. Everything. It was, it was, for lack of a better term, the closest thing you could come to as war. 100%. You know, like, because the stakes were the ultimate. Every it wasn't, single time. You'll go on, you'll go on, you, you, you'll see rivalries, you'll see brawls, and you'll see you know, teams, but not at the level. Count the Hall of Famers. What did I play with? 10, 12? How many are on their side? Right. At least eight, and that's, and that's it. Like the, the quality of play, the hatred of everybody involved, the stakes that were involved, what the winner got, you'll, you'll never see that again. No. You won't. No. You, you we won't, won't in our sport, lifetime. And, and here's the thing, too, in sports, 
because um, everything's got to be so tight and, you know, uh, Gary Bettman hockey, it's all about uh, coming down to the last week of the season, five teams. There's no rivalries because you have to move on to the next team, the next team, the next team. Closest thing you can find to sort of, let's say, rivalry is having great, you know, the Edmonton Oilers with Connor McDavid and, and Nathan McKinnon in Colorado. Can they get back there every year? It's not... Sports ain't set up with the salary caps and stuff like this to have dynasties. Right. And and dynasties at the top. So let it's, alone it's, two of them playing each and, other and where they took turns the winning and let alone the way that the rules were right. and I mean the biggest what blows me away to March watch March 26 and, and you realize 97 or whatever Vernon and Waugh get out there and slug it out and then you know Waugh's got stitches and he's bleeding back in net Next play, face <laughs> off. You guys are back in. That's it. No box. Like, goalies are the only ones that could get in a fight and then go back in the net. Somebody else served the penalty. It's crazy. <laughs> and, he, and, here, and this is interesting. This is a great point by Mike G. How can you hate this current Avs team? They're so skilled, so deep, and so fun to watch. A model of what the Red Wings should follow. And, Mike, I'll agree with you, man. I... I I like they're an that's, entertaining team to watch. We're talking that's about what this. Said before the show. Yeah. <laughs> this is who you are. You want to be these guys in two or three years? No, no. That's. Uh, I have no problem. Adam said to me before the show that if I ever wanted to, I don't know why I said that to hit somebody, I should hit the wonderful uh, Maddie Marin. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? And he said, well, she like you know, likes Colorado. And I said, uh, I'm the guy that took him at nine to one before the season. Um, because I believe in them and, and you know like that's the whole respect like Steve Eisman and Joe Sackick are the left handed and right handed version of each other okay so Colorado is a few years ahead of what Stevie's trying to put together and put it better and then he's looking and seeing how Sackick did and he's got Ronta and he's got Landeskog and he's got Makar and he's got McKinnon and, he did, and then Stevie goes oh I like how he did that and he's got his D-man oh but I'm going to shape it this way no I'm not going to spend the money here I'm going to make him earn it and he's got to get this is what you want to watch and, and because you know what when I say that this is where you want to sh- because this is where you should be high end two years low end three or four but it's coming and this is the team you got to build and they look at each other they see how they do it. And then at the end of the day, we're hoping it's Detroit, Colorado battling for a four or five year plan.